If we were saved just for eternal life, it seems the best plan is the moment someone gives their life to Jesus. <laughs> it's rapture then. Yeah. <laughs> we get saved. Yes, we do have eternal life. Yes, we will live with the Father forever when we leave this earth. But we are called to good work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are called to good work. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. Today, we've got a great guest with us. His name is Joel Ramsey. He's an evangelist, and he comes from Brisbane, Australia. His father and mom, uh, Mark and Lee Ramsey, passed a great church in Brisbane, City Point, and they are a Bible-preaching, word-based, spirit-filled, evangelistic church touching that city and many, many cities around the world. City Point has planted a number of other uh, city points around the world and are reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in a powerful way. Also have a great worship team yes. that have produced a number of great CDs. Uh, look up their music on iTunes. It really is awesome word-based songs. That's what I really enjoy about it is because a lot of songs can just sound really great. But uh, the Ramseys are a word people. And Joel Ramsey is now called of God to go and preach the gospel. And he now has moved to Durban, Correct. South Africa. Correct. Joel, welcome to Cape Town. Thank you. It's good to be here. And what brought you to Durban? Well, uh, we were on staff at my dad's church, as you said, for 11 years yeah. uh, on pastoral staff there. And uh, we felt the call of God about three or four years ago now to leave Australia. Yeah. And we didn't know where. And so we um, were seeking God and we felt that we were going to go to New York City. And yeah. uh, so we started making plans to move to New York City in, uh, mm -hmm. in America. And then as that journey was unfolding uh, in between a few circumstances and difficulties, some things happened. And eventually God redirected our path from New York City to Durban, South Africa. Well, that's quite a significant change. Yeah, so we feel like we got the better end of the deal. And yeah. so, and so uh, we ended up here in Durban, South Africa. Um, and so we believe that God's put us here for a reason and for a purpose to set the nation on fire. Yeah. Uh, and so, what, what is that reason? What's that purpose? Well, we, we, we're here to see, see a, a, a nation come to know Jesus and a continent, actually. Um, since arriving here... We, God's been stirring things in our hearts to mm. just uh, to reach the young people of this nation yeah. uh, and, and the continent uh, based on it's the future. If we, if we can reach the young people now, we can raise them up That's to right. influence the entire um, nation and continent. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that is the salvation yeah. of a nation. Amen. Is that it's not just a group of older people. Now, you know, I'm, I'm from... Uh, I'm not old, as one would say. And hey, listen, when it comes to the gospel of Jesus, the Bible says that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. And yours so, is. So, yeah, we can stay strong in the kingdom of God. Amen. But very often what happens is uh, if you get stuck in the religious tradition, mm. you can lose a whole generation. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. Uh, you know, you hear today about the need to be relevant, yeah. the need to reach a young people with a gospel that is relevant. And one of my concerns, having been in the church for some time now, is that there's a danger of losing the truth behind the Word of God. In other words, some things that uh, some people may feel, well, that's uncomfortable. We don't need to talk about that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to talk, reach people, you don't want to mention things like, and I'm not going to start mentioning those, but when you come to the Word of God, Jesus was very clear. He, he still spoke very powerful truths around the kingdom of God Amen. that sometimes exposed people yeah. and convicted, but it was always with a heart of love. 
Yeah, and, and for me, it's what it's happened. I was in church, in a relevant church, great church, and but I looked at my own life and my mother-in-law actually, thank God for mother-in-laws. Yeah. She said to me, you know, Joel, Mark 16 says, these signs will follow them who believe. That's right. They'll heal the sick, they'll raise the dead, they'll cast out demons. And, and I looked at my life mm-hmm. as a believer yeah. and none of those things were following me. Wow. And so from that, my life began to change and I began to seek and understand the power of God. Yes. And I was and I was saying to you, you know, in our private conversations that I, I believe one of my mandates is to merge the worlds of relevant and radical. I like that. Um, you know, just yes. for, for so there's there's parts of the body which are powerful and move of the spirit, but they're not relevant, so therefore they're missing out on reaching a whole mm. group of people. Yes. But there are some of us who We've become so relevant, but it's at the cost of the power of God. Mm. And so yes. we, we, in the gospel, we can't lose the power of God because, exactly. I mean, I, in my notes and thing, I have over 13 passages where Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and then and he healed, healed the sick That's and right. he cast out demons. It's not just about the preaching yes. of the word, but it's about the demonstration of power as well. Oh, absolutely. And I believe that's how God wants us to live with him. Yeah. He's not just a God that wants to be served. Amen. He wants to walk with us. That's demonstrated in the garden. When yeah. he first created man, he walked with man. Mm. It was sin that separated us. And that's exactly when Jesus came. You know, when the angel announced Jesus' birth, he said goodwill toward man. Yeah, wow. He didn't say goodwill amongst men. Mm. And if you, if you think about that terminology, he's talking about goodwill toward man. It's him. The, the religion thought God was against them, wanted to destroy them, always picking them out on their sin. Whereas Jesus came and said, no, I've come, I'll come deal with the sin issue. Yeah. Let's clear that sin issue away. And if we can clear the sin issue away, then we can be reconciled. Yeah. And so the war between man and God is over. Goodwill amongst men, it's goodwill toward men. Amen. It's Him showing goodwill. And that's exactly, if you look at Jesus, that's, you no. Know, Classical scripture, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed mm. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. There you got the radical. Yeah. Now filled with the Spirit. And you can have Holy Ghost meetings and, and outpourings of that. But he went about doing good. Yeah, wonderful. And healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God yeah. was with him. Yeah. And so he's, he, he carried the gift of the Holy Spirit for a purpose. Amen. And it wasn't just to lead people to salvation, because that's the most important part. Sure. Sure. The reason he gave his life was to get people saved. Amen. But he wants to touch humanity yeah. and redeem them from their problems. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it has to become a reality to us. I mean, we had in the weekends just gone, we had powerful meetings where God moved and people were healed. Yeah. And then just yesterday, I was actually driving uh, to, to the center of town and there was a man sitting on the side of the road with a sign saying, I have cancer, help. Oh my. Now he was begging uh, for money. Yes. And so I was driving, I looked at the man and I was on my way to a meeting and, and I, I was compelled. I said, how can I drive past this man if I believe what I believe? Wow. And so I pulled over to the service station yes. and got some water, took it over to him, started talking with the man, gave him some water, gave him some money. But I also said, sir, I don't want to just give you money. I want to pray that God's going to heal you. And so this man on the side of the road, we prayed and believed God that his cancer would be healed. Because like you're saying, we follow the Holy Spirit so we can go and do good works. That's right. Love humanity, not just be stuck in our four walls of our church building. Because the truth is, majority of the sick and lost people are out there. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's what you just said there. So important because... You, if you advertise the miraculous, mm. then those services always seem to be a little more full. Wow. And that is good. Yeah, we want to see people healed. We want to see people delivered. There's nothing wrong with that. We have those meetings as well. Yeah. But when you look at Jesus, when he, the disciples, they would say things like, you know, show us another sign. Show us another miracle. Mm. And he says, you know, is that the only reason you're with me? It's, it's about a relationship. And so Jesus would use the relationship. If you look at his ministry, he would speak to thousands. And if you look at that from the perspective of, uh, let's, let's call that a church service. Sure. 
even though it wasn't in a formal atmosphere, it would have been out in a, on a hillside or whatever. But then he also spoke to people one-on-one. -on -one. He, he saw the need. Mm. And he reached out to that need. Amen. He was, he was never just, in fact, the religious, like remember the, the blind man when he was shouting out, uh, son of David. Yeah. And everyone else tried to silence him. Wow. Be quiet. You're disturbing mm. the proceeds. Yeah. And I think we can get so formal about our church services that we, we sh can shut down the gifts, whereas Jesus yeah. pressed through. Yeah, he did. And he came and said, what is it that you want? Yeah. And that just you know, reminded me of what you were talking about with that man with cancer. Yeah. All of us every day are out in the marketplace. Church is not just about a Sunday meeting. No. That's an equipping time. Sure. That's the equipping process. Yeah, stirring each other up for love and good works yeah. so we can go and be love and good works mm. to the world. Well, isn't that part of the giftings? That's the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist. That's yeah. the office you walk in, pastor and teacher, for the equipping of the saints. Yeah, which I think is a huge um, thing we, we have missed over time of that the, the people have functioned in their gifting, mm. but they haven't necessarily equipped the saints, which is the main role of those offices, there you go. Um, is a, for us to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Because one, you know, if, if we entertain, I call it, if it's all about one man up on a platform, yeah. then we can fill the building. Sure. But if we equip the saints, then we can take the city. Yes. We can take the nation. I like that. And so it's time for the saints to rise. Absolutely. Now, isn't that why we were called? Yeah. Why we are saved? You know, I always say this, if, if we were saved just for eternal life, it seems the best plan is the moment someone gives their life to Jesus, <laughs> is rapture them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if the only purpose was to get them out of hell into heaven, there's enough evidence out there yeah, that wow. people have backslidden over a period of time. So why expose them to that? Yeah. All God wanted to do was fill heaven. Sure. Just leave the fivefold ministry down here, they can manage it. Just lead people one to one to Jesus. Mm. Let's have mass meetings. The moment you get 100 saved, boom, there Sell they go. <laughs> you know. But that's not the reason. We get saved. Yes, we do have eternal life. Yes, we will live with the Father forever when we leave this earth. But we are called to good works. Yeah, amen. We are called to good works. And that's where it's trusting for that anointing. The same way Jesus, when... He was anointed with the Holy Spirit, went about doing good and healing all the sick and oppressed the devil. Yeah. He also said that you would do the same works I did. Even greater. Isn't that true? Incredible. Now, you know, that already religious minds go, wow, well, I know Jesus <laughs> is the greatest. Yeah, but we're his body. Yeah. We're his body. And that means, you know, right now I'm sitting talking. Yeah, my mouth is... My face is probably getting the majority of attention. Yeah. That's usually when somebody talks, you look at it. But every other part of me enabled me to be here. Wow. And we are all part of the body of Christ. So Amen. Even when we do something that's greater, that's outside of something that we may think that Jesus did, He mm. already did it. But yeah. we're doing it in far greater volume, far greater works. Amen. It's really not us. No. It's Christ in us that's doing it. No longer I who live, but Christ yeah. who lives in me. So how, how would you go about equipping people to walk in those gifts? Yeah, well, I, I think one of the, the great things to equipping the saints to step out is, is to help people understand. We understand the spiritual gifts or the graces in people. And I've had people say to me, well, that's your gift. And so mine is, is this. Mm. Or they will see someone who we have equipped praying for people everywhere they go. And they think, right. man, he's got a gift of healing. Yes. And, and I would respond and say, you don't know that. But what you're seeing is him actually just stepping out as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if we look at all the gifts, yes. in Mark 16, it says these signs will follow them who believe. That's right. Heal the sick, raise That's the dead, cast out demons. Yes. And so even what your doctrine is on the gifts, whether you have them all, how the Spirit administers them, it, it, this, Mark 16, gives it as the assignment of every believer to heal the sick, raise yes. the dead cast out demons right. and preach the gospel. Yeah. And so I would, I would challenge people to step out of their comfort zones. I mean, I, I do. I, I, I preach publicly and I preach privately mm -hmm. on the street with people I know and people I don't know. Yeah. But the truth is I'm an introvert and it's really uncomfortable for me to do that. 
That's so for me to address someone like the men on the side of the road yes. is a is a massive decision for me to decide mm -hmm. I'm going to step past my human comfort and step into my calling as a son of God. Now, how um, did you do that? How, if you well, saying you're an introvert, that means you have a history of that, yeah, and you're aware of that. So that how did you get beyond that? Well, the, 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 I. I believe this. I believe too many Christians are educated beyond the point of obedience. Wow. And so we know so much. We can understand. Uh -huh. We can even quote scripture, yet we never actually obey the very thing that we're reading and understanding. And so when it became a revelation to me and, and a few of my friends, we began to stir each other up. Yes. And so as I would see someone, and, and when you get to understand that God wants to heal sick people through you, I promise you're going to see sick people everywhere. Uh -huh. they, and, and so you be, we began to see, and I knew um, a quick story. I, the first time I prayed for a lady in public, me and my brother were having conversation, just stirring each other up. We want to see the sick healed. We want to see you know, God do mighty things. We want to see people's limbs grow back. And as I said it, a lady yeah. walked across the beach in front of us with one leg. Wow. And so now we have a, a problem. You know, yeah. it's easy to talk faith and right. talk big, but putting action. And so I looked at my brother and we just decided we're going to go pray for us. So we yes. went over there full of fear, full of nerves, didn't know what to say. And, you know, sometimes you don't know what to say. And so I right. said to the lady, um, excuse me, I noticed you only have one leg. And, uh, and, and she laughed and said, you noticed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, I mean, she was so gracious Praise and kind yeah. to me. And we prayed with her and she walked away with one leg and it probably grew back later. We're not sure. And, yeah. uh, but uh, God taught me. He said, Joel, when are you going to stop putting your, um, your uncomfortability in front of other people's possible healing or salvation? Mm, yes. And so I began to realize that it's, it's not my will, but His be done. That's right. That God's chosen That's us, right. the saints of God, to step past our points of comfort for the sake of the lost, yeah. and the people who need healing. I like what you said there, because when you think, well, you said her leg probably grew on leg. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm. You know, my job is not to grow the leg. Amen. I don't know how to grow the leg. <laughs> But it did say, lay hands on the sick, and they will, will recover. recover. And recovery doesn't always happen in front of you. Sure. We know that even in the natural. The doctor says, yeah, take this antibiotics and finish the course. Even if you feel better, take it all the way to the end. Why? Because he knows you're not going to get better the first or second day. Yeah. But there's a recovery. So, mm -hmm. yes, we do see miracles instant. You see it happen right in front of you. But there's also where you have to say, I believe you are healed. Amen. Now watch the process. Yeah. And we need to be confident enough. And that's why I said my job, laying hands. I can do that. Yeah. Healing, that's his job. And I don't have to justify it. Amen. I don't have to try and people say, yeah, you lay hands, but it didn't work. Who said it didn't work? Yeah. It may hit them midnight tonight. Many times. Yes. Or a month later even. But I will not unhook my faith. Wonderful. And that's the key is... And, and if we can encourage you in this, is that that same gift is in every believer, just as Joel said, yeah. is believe that. Believe it. Mm -hmm. It is in you. You don't, you don't have to feel it. You don't feel it. You know, it's not like a fuzzy thing that suddenly happens. <laughs> you just lay hands and in confidence, if God said lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Mm. Your only responsibility is to put your hands on somebody and pray for that they healed. Yeah. And from that moment on, you walk away from it. You just thank God. And every time the enemy tries to challenge, yeah, but you're not really a healer. No, I'm not. Jesus is. Amen. You just rejoice in that. And yeah, but the person was still, they actually land up worse. Thank God. He has it in hand and he's processing it. I don't have to worry about it. So that's a gift that you stir up in yourself. So believe for that. Trust Amen. God. Now, in order to do that, in order to stir up our gift, and whatever we walk in, it's going to take faith. And so faith isn't something that you just switch on. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. So it's consistently listening to somebody talking about what you want to walk in, whether it's the gifts of healing, leading people to Jesus, and then reading the Word on it, receiving the Word, believing the Word, and then walking out on it. Now, we've got some great prizes going to help you with that. So watch this. 
I'll see you right after. Many people believe that God controls the flow of money into your life and into my life. It's not true. true. God doesn't give the wealth. 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 He's created, created wealth. wealth. But He gives you power, power. to get it. To get it. It's us. It's us. It's us. Bang, 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 word, word. Applying the principle, principle that releases the releases, releases. Join Alan Bagg and Didier Desson for the Faith and Finance Conference, taking place from the 30th of July till the 1st of August. When you find out your passion and your purpose and the gifting that God has given you, is to put you in a position where you are experiencing an unlimited supply. Your well is in the center of God's will. Join Alan Bagg and Didier Desson for the Faith and Finance Conference at the Bay Christian Family church from the 30th of july till the 1st of august don't miss out register online and secure your seat to be part of this dynamic impartation from two leaders who will help you understand kingdom finance the primary purpose for the cross was so that we could come into relationship with our father we have also been given the opportunity to give others the same privilege of knowing jesus as their savior you don't have to win multitudes to jesus it's your friends, it's your family, it's whoever's right there, your work colleagues. This series will help build your faith with some great practical keys you can use to help introduce your friends, family, and even those around you to Jesus. When Jesus paid the price for our sin, He also paid the price for our healing. Does Jesus heal today? If He does heal today, will He heal me? Through this powerful collection series of healing teachings, you will understand what Jesus paid for on the cross and you will be able to build your faith to walk in the divine life Jesus paid for. Any believer has the same capacity within them, the person of the Holy Spirit, to lay hands on the sick and see that person recover. Order your series by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Get them together and equip yourself with faith building tools that will help you walk in divine life as well as draw you and those around you closer to our Father. Praise God. You know, that is the truth that you and I have the same capability because of the faith that Jesus has given us. The day we were saved, we received the faith of God. The Bible says each one of us have been given a measure of faith. That means even when we think of somebody like Joel who is an evangelist and he reaches out and he speaks to thousands, get multitudes saved, it's not about necessarily getting the multitude saved, which is important. Jesus did that. He yeah. spoke to multitudes. But he also spent a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with individuals, with families. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like as we've talked about previously, uh, we, we each carry the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, which means we carry dead raising power. Yeah. And so every believer has that same spirit. That's and right. so to remember as you go, you may not hold the office of an evangelist or a prophet, but remembering that Jesus is your example, not the exception. And so as you go, remembering that Christ wants to move through, you know, yeah. the Holy Spirit came and revealed Christ to you so that he could reveal Christ through you to wherever you go. And so I Praise believe that God. these are the days of the rising of the saints. Oh, absolutely. Um, Each and every believer yeah. has that anointing within them. Absolutely. And, and that's exactly what it is. It's if we watch Jesus, whatever he did, we can say us too. Yeah. He said, you do the same works. Now, maybe you're saying, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to walk in those things. That's why we've made these products available so that you can get a hold of them. Mm. Listening to each one win one is so that you can stir up the gift. You don't have to win multitudes to Jesus. It's your friends. It's your family. It's whoever's right there, your work colleagues. And then, of course, healing, power collection. Those are 12 parts. It's a number of teachings that I've done over nine years put into one compact series so that you can build your faith in the area of healing and so that you can confidently speak to friends and family and lead them to Jesus and or heal them. Because even in healing them, it's going to let them see the truth of the gospel and that'll be something that'll help lead them to Jesus. So get that today. We also have it available on mp3 on a memory stick so everything is there and you can get a hold of that as well and my friend the most important thing that anyone can do is to give their life to Jesus that's the most important decision you need to make and if you're watching this program today and you happen to come past this channel you're not here by accident I want you to know the same Jesus that we've been talking to talking about loves you he loves you and he gave his life for you 
He paid for your sin and then he rose from the dead. And today he's alive proving you're forgiven. You just have to believe that. The Bible says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Right there, while you're watching, just say this out loud with us. Say this along with me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you. You gave your life for me. You paid for my sin. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. And I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live to serve you, to worship you, to honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again. Now, I have a free gift I'd like to sow into your life. This is a card that's going to help explain what's just happened. Some guidelines now that you are a Christian. And then this Bible study program is going to help you read through your Bible cover to cover in one year. And then the CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure and His Kingdom Victory, that is yours as well. If you can just write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number. And as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you. We'll even pay the postage for you as well. So welcome to the family. Well, Joe, we look forward to getting together tomorrow again around this awesome word. And we're going to have a good time. Amen. And we trust you'll be there with us. This is Alan and Joel reminding you Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. Allen Back Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Choose life.